Well, today marks six months since the upsetting and confusing events that took place at our nation's capital. I'm pretty sure the term capital insurrection was something you'd only think about in a movie, but it was reality. And by now, it's clear there was a lot of disinformation being spread on the Internet about that day. So please welcome Dr. Kate Starbird from UW. She's with us right now. Your research actually looks into this very serious problem. Kate, can you give us a little background on what your research looks like? Yeah, we um, have lots of colleagues at the University of Washington, great, great students and, and friends. And we have been doing research on the spread of online misinformation and online disinformation on social media and beyond. And that looks like, you know, combing through tweets and Facebook posts and doing different kinds of analyses and visualizations to kind of understand the patterns and trends of how disinformation takes shape and spreads. Uh, through um, through social media, often with the help of everyday users like our, like ourselves. Yeah, can you talk about what was happening online leading up to January sixth? Absolutely. If we look back, you know, you can look all the way back to June uh, of 2020 and see the beginnings of, of these efforts to sow doubt in the election coming out of then President Trump's own Twitter account claiming that the election was going to be stolen, there was going to be fraud. And then uh, after the, the election on, Jan uh, on November 3rd, that those those narratives just continued to take off. Um, there were all sorts of different false claims from dead voters voting to um, to claims that Sharpie pens had had disenfranchised specifically Trump voters, which which were profoundly untrue, um, and so these many claims just got kind of wrapped up into what eventually became what they called the Stop the Steal movement, uh, where people became really um, mobilized by by these false narratives. And I and I want to just stress um, that that what we see in the data is that many people were sincere believers of these false and and misleading narratives of voter fraud, and they began to really believe that 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 Donald Trump had been cheated and that they had been cheated, mm. and this caused a lot of anger. Yes, as we saw. How has it evolved over the last six months? This yeah. continue because I know disinformation does continue to spread on the internet. Absolutely. I mean, the, one of the things that we kind of started observing around December is that. Due to the just the number of different false narratives and how committed folks were to them, that that we were pretty confident that that people were never going to 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 uh, be corrected. That that these were going to be very persistent um, uh, misinterpretations of reality. And so we've seen those those you know claims continue. A large number of, of Republican voters still believe that that Joe Biden is not the legitimate president. They believe that Donald Trump was cheated. Um, and then after January 6th, there was a whole effort to sort of reframe those events uh, as something other than what they are, um, as either caused by left-leaning activists or, you know, caused by the FBI or something else. All these efforts to, to, to try to diffuse what we all saw with our own eyes, which was, you know, an insurrection attempt that was motivated by lies. So in your research, when you're looking at these disinformation campaigns, can you tell us this you know, a, a, a part of a larger disinformation campaign, or is it just conspiracy theorists? You know, it's such a hard question because they're, they intersect, right? So we see these top-down messages from people like Donald Trump and and his his campaign in this case. We've seen other cases as well where, where disinformation is coming from elsewhere, but we saw these top-down messages coming from political elites and media elites. And then we see these bottom-up narratives and conspiracy theories emerging from the audiences where people go to the polls and they're told to look for voter fraud and they misinterpret what they see as voter fraud. And so we see both top-down and bottom-up narratives sort of converging. And so we, we talk about conspiracy theories become part of disinformation campaigns. This has a long history, like the KGB used to do this. They would take organic conspiracy theories and amplify them and, and make them part of their disinformation campaigns. So there's this interplay between organic conspiracy theorizing and these larger efforts to mislead people for political and other objectives. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much, Kate, for taking the time to talk with us today and for all the research that's being done at UW. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to come on. Absolutely. We'll talk again.